biblical creationism. Uh, so let me warn again that uh, this is going to be, the discussion today is going to be little difficult, right? That means I want your undivided attention to the notes uh, so that uh, you can clearly understand uh, what is uh, what we have to learn, what we have to understand, what what are the things others say, right? What are the things others say? So let so we looked at yesterday about um, uh, what how God created the earth the universe with uh, six days, right? And we slightly saw the difference between evolution and uh, creation, right? How this happened. Today, we are going to look at the duration of the creation account. Okay? Duration of the creation account. How long it took for God to create, because now there are many Christians believe that uh, uh, believe in the words of scientists, right? They say it took millions of years, millions of years, because scientists believe, scientists believe. In evolution, most of the scientists, not all the scientists, there are Christian signs, right? Who, who are graduated from the same university like uh, atheists, you know, same Harvard, Harvard University. There are Christian signs, biblical scientists, right? Who doesn't believe what we are regularly taught on the school or what we read, right? Uh, in the most of the books the Darwinian theory of evolution. Not everyone, not every scientist, don't think in that way. But majority of the world, majority of the West, majority of the East, believe that Earth is millions of years old or perhaps billions of years old, actually. That's how they see, actually. And therefore, they believe that human beings are also millions of years old, the, the origin. Now, what we and so what is the problem? The problem is some Christians, some Christians, they believed that yeah, Earth is millions of years old. We also believe. How do we? Well, how how so? How do they explain it? How do they explain? They started to explain Genesis chapter one in different way. For them. They said one day is equal to either age. One day is an, is an age, right? That means a day, a day can be, mil, one day can be millions of years, according to the Bible. One day is equal to million years. So that means one day is one geological age. Geological age. That is what they, they said. So these Christians who wants to believe what the atheist science teaches, so they have said the world created in six geological age you know six days it is six geological age that's how the the world is created all right so uh, now how are we going to refute these ideas how are we going to understand what bible says according to the bible according to the bible the earth is very young. Very young. All right? Few thousand years. Few 
few thousand years. Some people believe that the earth is only 6,000 years old. Okay? 6,000 years old. Uh, that means it is, the earth is very young. Okay? So, the question is, what is right? Is the earth is very young, like a few thousand years? Or earth is very old, like, like millions and billions year of years? So this is the question that has to be, you know, we need to answer. So all our subjects, our learning is going to be centered around this uh, modern science. So what we, what we are going to talk here is, is against the modern science. So that means, you know, the way that we are going to explain is going to be a little technical, right? A little technical. I want your undivided attention, therefore, so that you can understand what we are explaining, okay? Let's look at the, so we believe a literal interpretation of Genesis 1, of the entire Bible, and including Genesis 1, all right? So, uh, before we go there, let me ask you a question. Have you ever, okay, what, what have you learned about the origins of the or uh, the origins of the universe. What, what are the things you have heard? Can, uh, can you say what you have learned so far, maybe from your school or from your church, maybe from a Bible college or somewhere? What have you learned about the origins of the universe? Can you just say? Yes, I want everyone to say a little bit. What have you learned? Go ahead, Josh, uh, Joseph. Yeah, per personally, uh, I have learned uh, uh, even the young Earth, a uh, young Earth uh, view, and also also about the Earth being million years old, both from Christian groups. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Very good. Uh, from Christ well, both from Christians, right? Okay. Very good. Uh, and of course, uh, you might have heard about um, uh, from the uh, non-Christians, right, the theory of evolution. Okay. Very good. Uh, Chandra? Is there? Chandra is there. Okay. Have you, what, what have you learned about um, the origin of the universe and things? I think the original universe is, uh, as far as my knowledge, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is uh, not so young, what I say. Okay, yeah, I understand. Not sure. Okay. Sakriya? Oh, well, uh, from the Bible, I was uh, taught that the, the hell was actually, you know, uh, the same with the heaven. And you know there was water all over, and God God had to right you know, divide the earth and the heaven. Yeah, I understand that one. I'm saying uh, how long it took for the earth to be formed. How long it took? Oh, I I believe it's number of years. It's the the earth is very old. Okay, you believe the earth is very old. Yeah. So because, you because know, if you calculate uh, the ages, look the Abraham, uh, Adam, how many years has he lived? And then uh, Abraham, how many years has he lived? So it's thousands. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay. So uh, I'm not sorry how old earth, okay, yeah, but how many how many days it it took for God to create the earth. Seven days. Okay. Or at least six days. Oh, six days? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you believe that it's God created within six days? Yes, I believe that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything, uh, Pastor Jose? You want to say something? Yeah, how, yes, yes. What you heard and what you, what you studied? How long it took for God to create the 
heaven and earth. Hmm. You can say. No. No sir. Okay. And okay. And where is um? Who else? Okay, <laughs> Jacob, you want to say something? No, no idea. No idea. No idea. Okay, no problem. No problem. All right. So, if you have any idea, you can say. You know, it's, uh, out there in the world, there are a lot of theories, right? Theories that uh, tell us that uh, among Christians, I'm talking not talking about unbelievers, atheists. I'm not talking about atheists. Among Christians, there are a lot of people who believe that earth is millions of years old in that God, you know, God took millions of years to create the universe, not six days, right? Not six days. That is the, uh, our, you know, problem that we see, okay? So let's um, <clears throat> look at why, why we believe the earth is young. It is not, not millions of years, right? So first of all, we are going to answer. This is to those Christians who says they are wise. So let's look at duration of creation account. Evidence for a literal interpretation. Since the days of the Reformation, which with its renewed and more consistent emphasis on a grammatical, historical hermeneutic, right? That is the interpretation. For interpreting scripture, a literal interpretation of the days of Genesis 1, chapter 1, verses 1, 2, chapter 2, verse 3, has been prevailing view of the Orthodox Christianity, right? Among, among Christians, that's what they believe. Um, this is to say, God created the heavens and the earth and all things there in six successive 24 days, right? So 20, sorry, 24 hour days, sorry, okay? So that means there are, it took six days. Each day had 24 hours, okay? However, with the rise of modern geology, it became apparent to many that if modern man were able to explain the Earth's topography, by the process that he could observe, he would have to allow for an earth that had existed for millions of years. Okay? If you wanted to accept the scientific theory, then you had to say earth had existed for millions of years. Because the geological data seemed so convincing, you know, seemed so convincing, many who claimed loyalty to the teachings of scripture felt compelled to re-evaluate the literal understanding of Genesis, the days of Genesis. They re-evaluated. Now, various explanations have emerged. On a broad level, Two basic groups are apparent, right? Two groups. Those who interpret the days of Genesis 1 figuratively and those who interpret days literally, right? Figurative interpretation of Genesis 1, literal interpretation of Genesis 1. So two groups are emerged. Those who interpret the days of Genesis 1 figuratively maintain that each day corresponds to a long period of time, right? In the morning and evening, that day, some people figuratively interpret and say, it is millions of years, or how long an interpreter needs to harmonize the Bible with the geology. Generally, those who interpret the days of Genesis 1 figuratively hold, to some form of okay, theistic evolution, or a term that if you have not heard, you heard evolution. Now there is a theory known as theistic evolution. 
or another one progressive creationism another one framework hypothesis another one day age theory day age theory okay so all of these all of these um, uh, theories are there coming up with the christians against the figurative use of day the literal interpretation of the days of genesis 1 stands as the orthodox view of the christian church orthodox view of the christian church is what literal interpretation of the day for example martin luther reflects literal interpretation of the days of creation with this statement we assert that moses spoke in the literal sense not allegorically or figuratively that the world with all its creatures was created within six days as the words read okay that's what Martin Luther. Now, John Calvin and Francis Tretton have also clearly articulated a literal understanding of the days of Genesis 1. Various Protestant confessions of faith have also formed the literal understanding of the creation of days, creation days, as we observed earlier. And, you know, uh, for example, Second London Baptist Confession of 1689, very old Baptist Confession, says, in the beginning, it pleased God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for the manifestation of the glory of his eternal power, wisdom, goodness, to create or make the world. And all things therein, whether visible or invisible, in the space of six days, and all very good. That's London Baptist Confession, right? 1689. Now, precise statements such these demonstrate that literal interpretation of the days of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, verse uh, chapter 2 until verse 3 has been the consistent position of Orthodox Christianity. Our goal in this section is to defend this position by providing biblical evidence to support this literal understanding. Then examine some of the problems this position faces. So we will set forth five reasons why. The unambiguous meaning of scripture demands that the days of Genesis be interpreted six successive literal days. All right, we are going to look at five reasons why it has to be six ordinary 24 hour days. Why it has to be. All right. So let's look at now here we enters into the technical explanation of grammar hebrew grammar right hebrew grammar so so if you are able to listen carefully okay and come with me okay uh, just put in hold your mind as we explain right semantics use of Singular use of the day. First of all, any attempt to argue for a figurative use of day in Genesis 1 violates the literal meaning of scripture. If, you, if anyone says a day in Genesis 1 is equal to a, a, you know, equal to a millennium or geological years, like millions of not equal to millennium, but equal to millions of years, then it violates the literal meaning of the scripture. The Hebrew word day, right? Yom, right? Uh, 
Yom, Yom is always used of a literal day when it's used in a singular noun and it is not of a particular compound, right? Compound grammatical construction. It's a little technical, right? So what does that mean? The word yom may also be translated as day, a time, a year, or for an extended period of time. Okay, that is right. Okay, but, but when a Hebrew word translated as day is always used of a literal day when it is used as a singular noun. And if it is not a part of other grammar construction. So if it is used as a singular noun, then it is talking about simple 24 hours day. That means there are places in the Bible the word day refers to ages. All right, refers to ages. There are you know, instances, so we will see that one. So from this, we can conclude that term yo may be used in a non-extended sense as day or an extended sense as time or year. The day can be used for time, day, can be used for year. By looking at that, many have con contended that if you take yom in an extended sense, then the day is simply a figure denominating, denoting an age. Right? So figurative interpretation would certainly solve our modern problem of harmonizing scripture with the geology. Following this type of thought, science interprets scripture rather than let scripture interpret itself all right okay however a major problem for non-literal understanding of yom is that hebrew lexicon consistently place it in use with normal days all right so um and maybe you may not have understood much right maybe a little so let me explain one more time so what is that if the word yom right Yom, this is a Hebrew word. All right. Yom means what? Yom means a day. So if Yom is used in a singular, all right, it's not days, in a singular, without connecting to other compound grammatical structure, in a singular way, if Yom is used, then it is always talks about. 24, 24 hour day, right? 24, for example, uh, maybe uh, you will read in the days of Noah, right? In the days of Noah. So you see days, plural there. So it is not talking about singular. Um, in the, not talking about singular day, it is plural, so no, no question at all. all right now, let me let me write uh, a word here. Okay. What is the meaning of this word in the day of judgment? Anyone can say? Anyone, any idea? Anyone can ex just give me some clue? All right, let me, let me ask you. Is it a reference to a single day? Uh, Single day consisting a uh, single day consisting of a day uh, twenty four hours. Hmm? In the day of judgment, is it a single day twenty four hours?
in the day of judgment. All right, let me, let me take one more example. That is day of the Lord. Okay, tell me what is the meaning of that one? Anyone? Day of the Lord. Question is, is it talking about like one day, like from morning till evening or 24 hours, single day? Is it that? Or is it an extended period of time? Period of time. Tell me. Is it extended period of time or single day? Day of the Lord. I think it is, uh, it is single day. Okay. Single day, day of the Lord. Any, 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 anybody else have an opinion? Hmm? Anybody else have opinion? No? But if you look at the Bible, study the Bible, Day of the Lord will begin, some, some of the verses begins from tribulation period. The whole tribulation period, according to my interpretation, this is about seven years. Right? How many? Seven years. So day of the Lord is, re is referred to tribulation, the whole seven years referred to as tribulation period. Right? Number two, the day of the Lord also, you know, uh, sometime for the world, for the millennial kingdom, I don't know whether you all believe this one, right? Thousand years reign, right? Thousand years reign, millennial kingdom is also, uh, it is also said as day of the Lord. Right? So, the question is, what is the meaning of day? Is it sim simply single day? So, what is our grammar says? The grammar says, if yom, that is day, is not part of a grammatical construction, day of the Lord, that is a compound grammatical construction. If it is not part of a grammatical construction, and it says, First day, third day, fourth day. Like uh, if when Bible says like that, it is referring to normal day. Okay, normal day. Now let me show you something more. The noun yom is used in the Hebrew Old Testament two thousand three hundred times. Right, and in that. 1,452 times it is used in singular, right? In the Pentateuch, it is used 668 times. In that, singular form is 425 times. In Genesis, it is used 152 times. In that, 83 is singular. So, what does that mean? When we, if you read, you know, all other things, and this is what we understand. If it is not such as days, if it is used as simple, simply as a day, and that day is not part of a compound grammatical structure, like day of the Lord, days, day of some, you know, days of Noah. If it is not used as com a compound grammatical structure, rather simply if it uses, it is always referred to single day, which has 24 hours, okay? So what we are saying, first of all, the first argument is this, if it is singular without a part of a compound gram grammatical structure, then it is a symbol single 24 hours day. Second argument, second argument, right? Arguments are easy. Evening and morning, as qualifiers of a single day, evening and morning. Remember when uh, 
when God, when Moses wrote Genesis 1, he says, evening and morning, first day. So, summary the answer is, the word evening and morning suggests that there was what? Sunrise and sunset. Right? Sunrise and sunset. Which suggests that it was, how many? 24 hours day. All right? So, let's get the, uh, le the second argument. The clauses in which these two nouns are found. There was evening and there was morning. And it stands in just opposition with each enumerated day of the creation week. There are many times that is used. So, in the context, it talks about 24 hours day. All right? So, somebody asks, Somebody asked you, I believe, I believe that the day in Genesis 1 is a geological age, millions of years. Your argument, number one, as I said, if day is used in a singular, not part of a grammatical structure, then that is a single day, 24 hours. Number two, in Genesis, it is simple day because... The word evening and morning is used. So evening and morning tells us that it is 24 hours a day. Okay. That is the argument. All right. Now, there are some technical uh, grammar, grammatical explanations out there. You can just read, right? Read that word uh, for your future reference. Okay. I'm not going to take you through all the reading because it is going to be um little more technical so i'm not going to read it there okay so that's the complete explanation of evening and morning now let's look at the third third argument numeric qualifiers and the singular day numeric qualifiers another reason why day must be literal day arises from the use of numerical qualifier with the word a day in which Moses summarized God's creative work for that day and he says first first day second day right third day fourth day fifth day and sixth day and now you take you take that into the or other parts of the Old Testament. Um, for example, so the you okay when yom is used with the numerical qualifier in the Old Testament, it is never used in a figurative sense. Never used. For example, Leviticus twelve verse three, and on the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Is there a geological age? Not at all. It's symbol day. So, numerical qualifiers tells us that in Genesis 1, it is symbol 24 hours day. Okay. So, that is the third argument. Okay. First argument, when yom is used in singular, without a part of a compound grammatical structure, it was always 24 hours a day. Second argument. When there is evening and morning is used, it tells that this is 24 hours period of day. Third, numerical qualifiers like first day, second day, third day, throughout the Old Testament, it tells single day. Fourth argument. Right? Fourth argument. Scriptural parallels with the day. Scriptural parallels with the day. Sorry. Further sub substantiating this understanding of the day as literal day is parallel use of exhort uh, days. It's parallel use. Let's look at Exodus 20 verse 11. Can one of you read, please? Exodus 20, verse 11. Exodus 20, verse 11. Please read. 
Exodus 2011. One of you, please. Okay. For in six days the Lord made heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord uh, blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Yeah. So here is the context is the what God is giving the Ten Commandments, right? Called as Decalogue. Decalogue means what? Ten Commandments, right? God is giving Ten Commandments. And as he was talking about Sabbath, uh, you know, when he talks about keeping Sabbath as holy, God is bringing an example in the Old Testament from the Genesis that God created, God created um, the, the earth with a six days. Six days. Six days. So it cannot be, cannot be, cannot be age. Now, if it is age, Imagine, imagine that, you know, this a day is an age. Then how should, how should we read? Here is, here, is the, here is the way you have to read. This is wrong, but this is the way you need to read. A day is equal to age. Then you have to say, for in six geological ages of a million years or so, the Lord made heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. And he rested the seventh geological age of a million years or so. Wherefore the Lord blessed Sabbath geological age of a million years and hallowed it. That's how you have to say. Which is absolutely no sense at all. There is no sense at all. So please understand uh, the theory of geological age. A day is equal to geological age is not right. Look at one more example. So we read... From Exodus 20, verse 11, right? Let's look at one more verse. Uh, this is Exodus chapter 30, 31, verse 14 to 17. 31, verse 14 to 17. Therefore, you are to observe the Sabbath that is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. Whoever does not work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. For six days, work may be done. But on the seventh day, there is a Sabbath to complete rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on Sabbath day shall surely put to death. So the sons of Israel shall observe the Sabbath to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generation as the perpetual covenant. It is a sign given to me and the sons of Israel forever. For, for in six days, Lord made heavens and earth. And on the seventh day, he ceased from labor and were, were ref, uh, refreshed. So Moses believed six days and six days as 24 hours a day. All right. So what is our argument? Scriptural parallels. We looked at two parallels. One is Exodus chapter 20. And the other one, Exodus chapter 31. Both passages suggest that the day in Genesis, not geological age, but it is symbol day. All right. Finally, all right. Finally, we'll look at one more and then we'll close. All right. Sequence of events and a day. Sequence of events. The sequence of events in the creation week also demands a literal day. On the third day of, the, of creation, God created vegetation with the fruit trees and seed bearing plants. Okay, God created what? Vegetation. God created plants on the third day. And much vegetation needs insects for pollination. Right? If you want, if vegetation but you see trees that are there, they need pollination, right, in order to grow. And we you need insects for pollination to produce. Insects were not created until the sixth day, right? So if the survival of these type of plants, which needed insects for pollination, 
depended on them to generate seeds and to perpetuate themselves, then there would be a serious problem should the creation day consist of long ages or eons. The type of plant life dependent on this type of pollination process without the presence of insects could not have survived for those long periods if they to mean age or eons. So what it suggests, if the day is ages, then there is no way for vegetation to, to, to continue, perpetuate. There is no way because insects were not created until sixth day. So it is, if it is simple day, then within three days or four days, you have, or three days, you have uh, insects are there coming to pollinate plants, right? So these five reasons provide solid biblical evidence for the contention that we interpret singular use of day in Genesis chapter 1 verse 23 as six successive 24-hour days. Five reasons why we believe that day in Genesis is six symbol 24 hours day. All right? It is not geological age. Right? Why? If you are there in the field, if you are studying a college, or if you study in some Bible colleges, then you are going to see that you know they teach you maybe gap theory, or they teach you many other theories that says that you know, Earth is really old, old like thousands of, like millions of years old. That is what everyone tells. Even Christians say that. Right? That is the reason we, we come up, we are explaining in this lesson, it is not right. Okay? Now we will look at the, the objections to the discussion that we have in the next class.